Wherever you are, welcome to another of my takes on China, and this is short but important. I've been saying since April when they were first introduced that the rare earth element restrictions are not a tit-for-tat retaliation, but a genuine national security concern. Now imagine, as I said a few months ago, making explosives and selling them to the US so they could put them into weapons, send those weapons to Asia, and point them at China. That would be ludicrous. And that's exactly what China has been doing for a very long time with rare earth elements. Why did it take so long to stop doing that? It appears so stupid. And that's a very good question that a lot of people have been asking. And the answer was given by Anu Batron on X the other day, citing a Chinese analyst. And the problem was helium. The US had a 95% monopoly on that, and China needed to remove that reliance, not reduce it, but remove the reliance on this, because it's important in many things, not just balloons. China did that, now they have less than a 5% reliance on the US for anything of strategic importance. In other words, the US has become completely superfluous to China's needs. However, despite the fact that I think Arnu's piece is incredibly important, and I strongly recommend checking it out, that's not why I'm here today. I've linked that just for a bigger picture. China hasn't banned these products at all. It's done the same as it's done for drugs, drug precursors, and for weapons. It's restricted them to end users, buyers who have the appropriate paperwork and justification to buy them. Another reason why we here in China know for certainty that China is not supplying fentanyl precursors to the USA, it would be illegal to do so without the proper paperwork. And believe me, in a bureaucracy like China, that would be very hard to manage illegally and impossible to do so surreptitiously through legal channels. So it's not China's problem. Actually, the words of another friend of mine, Warwick Powell, are the reason I'm making this video today. I didn't write most of the rest of this script. Warwick did. Warwick is an adjunct professor of Queensland University. He's a senior fellow of the Taiha Institute. He's also one of the most prolific contributors to the China narrative that I know. He's a regular guest on many shows, all of them more important than mine, but he agrees to come on my channel every time I've asked him. So he's also an all-round good guy and a person who is very hard, if not impossible, to prove wrong. So. Because he and I are so much in alignment on this, and with his permission, let me tell you what he said in a small group that I'm involved with on social media here in China. It's been a rollicking 72 hours, he said, and he's right. What have we learned from the back and forth around the rare earth elements export controls announced by China's Ministry of Commerce? Number one. We've seen how hypersensitive the US is to anything related to rare earth elements, particularly when they go to the military-industrial complex. China's export controls announcement was clear that permit applications for REE exports for military users would, in principle, be denied. For dual use, they would be appropriately regulated. And this is a key space, by the way. For non-military civilian use, export permits will be issued. Two, the hypersensitivity was evident when the US blew a gasket coming out aggressively and accusing China of instigating a ban on the world. The claim was that this was a total surprise. We know the Americans were pre-advised of the claim, so surprise is a nonsense. Aside from evidencing hypersensitivity, we also saw how effective the US propaganda machine can be in shaping public perceptions. Now, I would add to this, we also know that every country in the supply chain was advised, as this had been described by the US, as being China dictating terms to the rest of the world. It isn't. It's China telling the rest of the world that you're okay to get REEs, but only if they're for peaceful purposes or purposes approved by us. Back to Warwick's comments now. Number three, 
Ministry of Commerce clarifies the position by reiterating the above points, but in more accessible terms, less formal bureaucratic. The US claims this is a softening, indicating Beijing's backing down. It's neither. The only evidence of any backing down would be the removal of export controls. This hasn't happened. The positions articulated by the Ministry of Commerce are substantial, substantively the same as the formal announcement made. 4. As for Trump, he's now talking about President Xi having a bad moment and that America wants to help China. This is classic Trump. We can see how the propaganda verbals the counterpart, imputing things the counterpart never said, then launching on clarifications as signs of backing down, which didn't happen. What can we learn from this, Warwick asks, the three takeouts. Number one, the US has a real soft underbelly. Number two, the US communications propaganda capability is more finely attuned to shaping the terrain. And number three, Trump bloviates hard at the drop of a hat, then finds ways to exit the predicament. Now, that's the end of the quote from Warwick. As a final add-on to this, I'd say one look at your X feed in the last few days, if you have one, will tell you something is happening in the US. I've been accused many times of being a shill, a CCP mouthpiece. I've literally seen hundreds, if not thousands, of disinformation posts on X, but in all my time on there, I've never seen so many posts lying about China insulting anyone speaking positively about China and trolling any post that mentions China or defends China in the last 24-hour period. Is this a coincidence? I don't think so. They accuse us of being woo-mows, getting paid for posting. But one of two things is happening on X at the moment. Either many millions of dollars are being spent to promote an anti-China narrative or so many people are so angry with China right now that they've decided to get online and show how little they know about the situation for free. But what stimulated them to do so? And the only answer to that is a concerted effort to promote a narrative. And the only reason to do that is to deflect from the truth. The truth being that China now has the upper hand. The US is in dire straits. The real earth element restrictions have hit so hard they're not going to be negotiated away. China made that clear several months ago. They've reiterated it now. And Trump knows without a shadow of a doubt that he's lost not only the trade war, but every aspect of leverage or leverage that he thought he had. A few days ago, Bloomberg was talking about a leak which had promised a brighter future, a deal whereby up to a trillion US dollars would be invested by China into the USA. The video I made about that created the highest number of comments per view ratio of any video I've ever made. Most people thought it would be crazy for China to do this as the US can't be trusted to abide by any agreement they enter into. Nor do the US deserve it, a lot of people thought. Another bailout by China? They had their chances to do the right thing in the last financial crashes, but have not yet done so. So we're going to see what conciliatory words come out from Trump, such as Xi Jinping just had a bad moment. Trump also said, we'll be fine with China. These are the calm before the storm. The US seems to be so locked into their own personal view of greatness that they haven't quite recognized yet that they've been outsmarted. China has no reliance on the US. The US had many reliances on China. Trump's knee-jerk reactions to cancel the meeting in Seoul, his later more considered reaction, TACO, was to suggest they might meet. His trade representative, Jameson Greer, can't even get a call into his counterpart in China this weekend. China doesn't feel there's anything to discuss. This is game over on this round for the USA, which presumably means it's game on for the next phase, which will not be trade war with China, but lashing out with sanctions on anyone dealing with China, with military actions on smaller countries, with economic coercion where they can. Let's watch this space with interest because for now, China has won this round. The next round almost certainly will be US escalation rather than China's conciliation. Mark my words, 
restrictions on rare earth elements will not be removed, reduced, or in any way rolled back, not until the US has removed the military threat they pose. I can't see that happening anytime soon. Can you? Please, if you can, put a reply in the comments and I will read them. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, as always. I'll see you next time.